I'm Sam. And I'm Darby. No, hang on, aren't I Darby? Oh yeah. God bless the auto cue. Magnetism. Magnetism, magnetism, magnetism. Magnetism, magnetism. Yeah, Darby, stick to the script. This is a bar magnet. This is my nail. Thank you. If I rub my magnetic wand over Darby's nail, then Darby's nail becomes magnetised. We have stored data. Uh, Darby, that's my bit, isn't it? We have stored data. This is how a hard drive works. Mostly. Is it? Yes it is, young Padawan. So what you're saying is, there are ten trillion, trillion, trillion nails in my hard drive? Yes, but they're very small. Are they? Yes, much smaller than my nail. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Come on, Darby. Inside a hard drive, there are two main parts. The read-write head and the platter. The platter is a disc made of aluminium, glass or plastic. No food. Sounds a bit rubbish. The platter is coated with a material that can be magnetised, like iron oxide. The platter is divided into trillions of sectors, which are a bit like Darby's tiny nails. There are about five billion sectors every square centimetre. So if I want to store on one... Okay, so the CPU tells the read and write arm to move to the part of the platter where you want to store the one. Faraday's laws of induction state that when a current passes through a wire, a magnetic field will be generated perpendicular to the wire. So the read right head has a coil of wire through which current will be passed. Okay, this generates a magnetic field which magnetises the sector of the platter 10 nanometers below the read right head. A bit has been stored. So how does the read right head find the sector? Okay, well the hard drive, the hard disk, is divided into tracks, like circles, and regions, like slices of cake. The disc spins, so the only way the read-write head has to move is in one direction, to change track. It spins mad fast. 5400 or 7200 RPM are standard for laptops and desktops. Unfortunately, the fact they spin means that if you drop it, it will smash. Much like knolls and a flight of stairs. <laughs> but how does the arm find which track to go on? Well, the magnetic field can also exert force on the actual head. And because it's very light, this Lorentz force can actually physically move the arm. Wow. And Faraday's law also states that a changing magnetic field will induce a current in the wire. This is how a generator works. But why do computers use this type of storage? Well, magnetism is not dependent on the power supply, so the data is non-volatile. This makes magnetic storage useful for backups, and most data, to be honest. There are three main types of magnetic storage. Hard drives. Magnetic tape. Which, because it must be accessed sequentially, are mostly used for backups. Basically obsolete now. And now we come to the part of the video which we don't want to do. Darby's floppy disk. Designed in the 1980s, floppy disks can store, wait for it, 2 meg of data. That's enough for half a picture of a rabbit. They work in a similar fashion to other magnetic media. To pay homage to a legacy medium, there is only one way to pay tribute. Complete and utter destruction. <laughs> Safety remember, third. Remember kids, magnetic storage is your friend. Oh, hang on, wait, wait, news just in. Apparently, SSDs are far superior to magnetic storage in every way. But, since they're not magnetic, not our problem. Guess we've just wasted, wasted three minutes of your life. Thank you.